Yellowstone supervolcano. Recent research shows the carnage that geologists have found at a pressure cooker-like Yellowstone Lake. Yellowstone is one of the 20-some-odd supervolcanoes found across the world. It's situated at the northwest corner of Wyoming, overlapping into Montana and Idaho. It has 60% of the world's geysers, and uh, the volcano experts ex have now exposed the extreme environment of Yellowstone Lake after a year-long monitoring experiment on the lake's floor. Now, this uh, park covers 3,500 square miles over the ancient volcanic hotspot of the supervolcano. The last super eruption happened at the caldera 640,000 years ago, and the caldera was created during a cataclysmic eruption that was preceded by two more huge supervolcanic blasts, 1.3 million years ago and 2.1 million years ago. It also had a lava eruption 70,000 years ago and another 80 eruptions since then. Kindly support my Patreon channel because YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. I will be uploading at least five videos every day. These videos are different from the videos I have on my regular YouTube channel. Please find the link to my Patreon channel in the description box below each video. Thank you for your support. The magma chamber of Yellowstone is fed by a magma reservoir, a huge magma reservoir some geologists believe extend to the border of Mexico, and they found that it was huge because of the fact that Yellowstone emits 45,000 tons of carbon dioxide every single day. When they examined the amount of carbon dioxide emitted from the supervolcano of Yellowstone, that's how they understood that there was a huge magma reservoir feeding the magma chamber. This is the lake, and you'll see that uh, the caldera has a lake at the southeastern part of the caldera, as you see there. Tremendous amount of geysers, 60% of the world's geysers, as we said. Now, the uh, area here has up to 3,000 earthquakes every year, and that's normal activity from what the geologists at the USGS tell us. More than three years ago, in August of 2017, a team of uh, researchers from the University of Minnesota used a number of autonomous sensors to uh, examine the Yellowstone Lake bottom. Now, the mission lasted until August 2018, and they saw the sensor surviving scorching temperatures, high pressures, and acidic waters, and also as well as possible hydrothermal explosions under the water of the lake. Now, we know that the geologists told us that even the wind, a breeze blowing on the surface of the lake could create a, uh, an earthquake because that's how sensitive the roof of the magma chamber is. The lake sits on top of the roof of the magma chamber, of the caldera which is three, the roof of the magma chamber is three miles down. So if you're visiting Yellowstone and you're walking on the ground there, three miles down is the roof of the magma chamber. Now this mission from the University of Minnesota lasted until August 2018, and they saw the sensor survive scorching temperatures and possible hydrothermal explosions. Scientists now presented their findings describing some of the surprising discoveries that they found in the lake. Their study was published in the Journal of Volcanology and Geothermal Research. And uh, two of the researcher sensors were deployed at the lake's deepest part, an area known as the Deep Hole. And there, the titanium-covered instruments were placed above the hydrothermal vents where unusually hot water temperatures hit up to 302 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's three times the temperature of boiling point. Now, Chen Wan Tan, Andrew Fowler, and William Seafried from the University of Minnesota linked the bottom of Yellowstone Lake to a pressure cooker. The researchers wrote in the U.S. Geological Survey Caldera Chronicle column, the vent fluids 
formed were hot streams, where hot streams push through the clay on the lake floor and then mixes with cold water lake, uh, cold water of the lake. The location is much like the steam-fed fumaroles of the mud volcano area of Yellowstone National Park, but higher temperatures are reached at the lake floor because of the weight of the overlying wa water of the lake, acting like a pressure cooker that raises the boiling point at the steam vents. Now we all know what a pressure cooker is. You ha create pressure in order for the boiling point to go lower down and uh, the, the food cooks faster. Now surprisingly here in Yellowstone at each vent, the remote sensors detected different temperatures when compared to thermal loggers in the de uh, which were placed deeper into the vents. In one vent, temperatures remained steady throughout the study and in other areas, they plummeted for months on end before picking up again. In vent A, temperatures recorded by the thermal logger were found to be more than 90 degrees Fahrenheit, higher than the sensor position higher up. And researchers, of course, said, more surprising, the PVC encased battery and electronics placed in cold water lake over three feet from the vent and buried only three to five centimeters, about an inch in sediment, were thermally deformed. The PVC was partly, partially melted. Uh, the outcome revealed that extreme environments where high temperatures in the lake sediment are more widely di distributed than previously thought, and now at location B, the chemical sensor had been dislodged from the vent and submerged at about 20 centimeters of that sediment, and despite the carnage there, successful chemical measurements were taken for several months. The dislocation of the sensor most likely occurred during the slumping of the sediment, and it may have been triggered by small hydrothermal explosions, which are frequently occurring in Yellowstone's geyser basins. The geologists speculate that same explosions take place on the lake floor. Alternatively, the slump may have been caused by seismic activity in the area. Now, we know that in March of last year, we had the 6.5 earthquake in Idaho, about uh, 90 miles, 100 miles west of Yellowstone. And from what uh, Michael Polak, uh, Poland told us, who is the uh, geologist in charge of Yellowstone, uh, that may have uh, that earthquake may have uh, somehow had an effect on the plumbing system of Yellowstone. Not the lava or the magma, but the plumbing system, he says. So obviously, and also we had the, um, two weeks before that, we had the 5.7 of uh, Salt, Lake City, Salt Lake, Utah, and uh, that was just south of Yellowstone. So these two big earthquakes that took place last March obviously shook Yellowstone quite uh, strongly. Now, um, from what uh, the researcher said, whereas the cause of the slumping is speculative, identification of extreme temperatures were centimeters beneath, mere centimeters beneath the lake floor, and the tortured journey of the two robust sensors packages are a testament to the dynamic and extreme environment beneath Yellowstone Lake. Of course, you know, underwater, they can't really tell what's going on, but there are underwater geysers. Now, he says, we are excited to continue exploring this dynamic landscape, a setting that is every bit as wonderful, wondrous as the geyser basins that are enjoyed by millions of visitors every year. And uh, this is by Express UK, Sebastian Ketley. Now, I remember um, now one vacation we took to the uh, volcanic island of the Aegean Sea in Greece, the volcanic island Nisiros. It's a volcano, basically. It uh, has a geothermal plant there. It has uh, magma, obviously, underneath. And it's strange because we uh, used to go swimming in the beaches around there, and you'd feel, you would see bubbling, uh, bubble, bubbles coming out from the under, uh, under the sea, under your feet. Uh, there were bubbles coming up, and when you stand around them, some areas were hot water coming out. Other areas were cold water coming out. And also the other strange thing is that the cows were drinking the seawater because, and when you came out from swimming in the sea, you had no salt water on you. It's as if you took, you came out of a bath. There was no salt on your skin or very little salt. And that's why the cows were drinking the water. 
Now, we know that volcanoes do very wonder, wonderful stuff. One of the things they do is they, uh, oh, they also had hot springs baths there from antiquity, from thousands of years ago. In the island, volcanic island of Nisiros, they have uh, hot spring baths. They used to come from ancient Egypt to go to the hot spring baths of Nisiros. So, uh, yeah, volcanoes also uh, recycle water. They recycle water, and a lot of this water comes out clean. Uh, other water does not come out clean. It may be acidic or poisonous, toxic. For example, some of the water, the geysers coming out of Yellowstone have mercury coming out, and a lot of these um, geyser waters empty into Hebgen Lake. Unfortunately, a lot of people, you know, there's a lot of hotels around the coast of Hebgen Lake. People go there and they fish, and they come out with these trouts from Hebgen Lake, but they're full of mercury, so you have to be careful not to eat those fish because of the geyser water being very uh, rich and heavy with toxic mercury. So, okay, uh, I just wanted you to know that, yeah, there is... Uh, geysers underneath <laughs> underneath the sea, it's just that you can't see them. So that this is what's taking place in Yellowstone Lake, and this is something that they just started examining, I guess. So please leave your comments. I hope you enjoyed this. This is uh, they have a, they have over ten thousand hydrothermal areas in Yellowstone, and um, they're still researching a lot of this area. Uh, uh, and there are changes taking place. The place is deforming. New geysers are becoming more active. Other geysers are dropping in activity. So they have a lot of work to do. Anyway, thank you for your support. Please leave your comments. Thank you.